Hello, and welcome to my talk about Pulsar's new database table abstraction. My name is David Karamgard, and I'm currently a developer advocate at Stream Native. I'm also a committer on the Apache Pulsar project. And prior to Stream Native, I was a principal software engineer on Splunk's internal Pulsar as a service team. I'm also the author of Pulsar in Action by Manning Press and co-author of Practical Hive by A Press. So let's begin. Pulsar has recently added a new database table abstraction of a change log stream on a primary keyed table. I will discuss this new feature, its API, and demonstrate how to implement various SQL semantics using this table abstraction. This new database table abstraction is called the table view. It is a new consumer type added in Pulsar 2.10 release and it provides a continuously updated key value map of compacted topic data. This interface serves as an encapsulated uh, access pattern providing a continuously updated key value map view of the topic data. With the table view, Pulsar clients can fetch all of the message updates from a topic and construct a map with the latest values of each key. This is how it acts as a change log. Every message in that topic is with the same key is intended to be treated as an update to that value. So only the most recently added message to that topic with the same key represents the most recent value and the value that should be used. Also note that this is a read-only data structure. Although it has map semantics, you cannot update that information within the map itself. It is, uh, this is done internally with the Pulsar API itself. So what is it? Let's look at it visually and see how this goes. So as we can see here, a topic can contain multiple messages with the same key, in this case, key one. The table view treats the data as, again, as a large change log, meaning that the newer messages with the, with the key one is treated like a database update command, uh, as you can see here in the table view. This new value replaces the older value conceptually, and this is reflected in the table view. So if you were to do a lookup for key one at time t0, you would have gotten value one, but at the but doing the same lookup for that key at time uh, for key one at time t2 would return a newer value value three. This reflects the fact that the newer value for key one has been added, and that is the most recent considered the most recent value as a change log would reflect. So how it works internally, we'll talk about this uh, very briefly. Uh, when you create a table view, an additional compacted topic is created alongside that topic and is used to feed the table view with the most recent copy of, of each key's data. Now in Pulsar, when a topic is compacted, only the most recent value associated with each key is retained and the older values are effectively skipped. This makes reading and scanning the topic much more efficient for consumers. So as you can see here, there's multiple entries for the, for, uh, the Netflix stock quote as shown here in this diagram but we're only interested in the most recent one. So if you were to query that information, you don't want to scan the entire topic and keep updating it every time you run at that Netflix key. This compaction process does that for you in the background and reflects, creates this, the subtopic that has all this, only the most recent values for each one. Uh, so for the table view, a background reader is attached to this compacted topic that consumes these messages and updates the map values when a new record arrives in the compacted topic. So we push off all this performance into the compacted topic that already existed inside Pulsar itself. Now let's look a little bit at the table view API. In addition to the traditional map operations, the table view API also provides these three key methods highlighted here. And I've copied the description from the API docs themselves. I will cover how each of these can be used to serve different use cases, such as data enrichment throughout the demonstration, but I want to highlight, highlight them here. These are the real differentiators. I will also show how the tables can be joined with traditional Pulsar scheme streams or to one another to provide SQL-like semantics. Again, left outer joins, right outer joins, streaming data to a table, a table to a stream, so on and so forth. So what can they be used for? I, we showed these different methods. Uh, again, the get method can be used for lookups, right? It allows you to perform table lookups on a per key basis. And a good use case for this is joining an active streaming consumer to a table view in order to combine the data sets to do things like data enrichment. Again, uh, we'll talk about this. You have a stock quote, as we saw in the previous example. And you, so that's a real time stream. And you want to look up uh, stock 
the stats based on that, which are which is a slower table view, and we'll, we'll walk through that in a bit. The for each method uh, mentioned provides a provides performs a user defined action against each entry in the table view. A good use case for this is joining two slow moving data sets together for display. So if you have two different tables, you want to do a for each, uh, and you do the scan once exactly once. So it's a one time operation uh, doing a for each. Uh, the last method for each and listen uh, similarly performs a user defined action against each entry in the table view. However, this action is triggered every time the table view is updated. A good use case for this is joining a slow changing data set such as a stock portfolio and all the positions in it with a fast moving data set such as stock quotes. So again, only when the slower moving data set uh, is triggered, there's a change in that data set, then you will go again and recalculate all these values whatever action you want to perform that's only done when the values in that table view change. So for this talk, I will be using a stock trading application to highlight these three methods, those three API methods we just mentioned in the table view API. But first, let's get familiar with the data sets that we'll be using throughout the demo in order to better understand and appreciate how we're performing, how we're going to use this information, how the data sets are joined. So like any stock uh, trading uh, application, the first, first use case, the first data set is going to be stock quotes. And stock quotes are fed into the system from a, as a continuous stream of records. Think of it like a NASDAQ is going to continuously feed this data from the trading floor itself and you get this information into your platform. Now using the ticker symbol as the key allows us to construct a table view that contains the most recently quoted price for each ticker symbol, symbol as shown here. Right? The schema is very simple in this case, we boiled it down to the most simplest a use case, there could be additional uh, data, but for this one, we're just using a symbol, which is the ticker symbol, and then the quoted price. This is the qu price you can quote it at. And as you can see here, uh, over time, only the most recent value quote, in this case, there's, there's multiples for Apple, multiple entries for Google, that the table view is gonna reflect the most recent one, the newest one that has been received. And that table view prevents you from having to scan all this to find those, those recent, most recent ones. So this is a very good use case for that. And then you can have a stock quote table view is one of the views we'll, we'll, we will be using. Next is the stock trades uh, view itself or data set itself. This is a, a stock trade stream. Now the stock trades are fed into the system also as a continuous stream and each record represents the actual trading of shares between accounts. Uh, a traditional stream processor consumes these records and uses that information to update uh, records in a stock st uh, statistic stream as shown here. I'll discuss this, the details of the stock stat stream in a moment on the next slide, but for now just be aware that this data comes in. It's in a historical stream of data. It is not, it cannot be really traded as an effect, as a, as a change log, because each one represents a transaction. So they don't have the sense of having a the sameness, this is a new value for the, the trade of Oracle, but rather it is a rec record of all these different trades of Google was traded at, at different prices, different number of shares, so on with Apple, so on with Netflix. So it doesn't make sense to use a table view here. Uh, instead, we have to use a stock stats calculator to feed this information. Also note that the schema uh, has, again, it has the symbol, the same symbol, which is your ticker symbol. It has a number of shares that were traded and the execution price at which those shares were, trade, were uh, traded hands. Uh, on the other side of that stream processor, that's stock stats calculator that I discussed in the previous slide, lies the stock stats stream. Again, this will be more like a change log because we take this information out and we compute various uh, statistics for each individual uh, uh, stock based on the trades data, right? So again, a trade comes in and we use that information to calculate statistics such as daily trade volume and the daily high low price for each security. Uh, and, it's and it does this by doing an update of an existing record by reading the previous value out of the table view and updating that information with the stock trade detail. So as you can see here, for example, we had an older value for Google coming in. Uh, it had a total volume trade shares of a little over 102,225. Uh, obviously a stock trade came in that executed for Google in the amount of 500 shares. And so we see a newer record about halfway through this, this topic where we've, we've reflected that at the very bottom field being the daily volume. We've increased that amount by 500, but all the data became the same. And so now that is the most recent value for Google. And we can put again a table view on this because again, this represents a change view type data structure. And we're gonna wanna use this later. So we've done this 
uh, intentionally manipulating reading that, that stock trade data and converting it into some statistics that is into a change log type structure as well. The scheme is highlighted at the top where we have, a, uh, again, the ticker symbol, a daily high, a daily low, and a daily uh, volume. Additional fields could be added as well. Additional calculations could be added. This is just a bare minimum to demonstrate the addition, additional fields uh, calculated outside of all other data sets. And then last but not least is a stock positions data set. So every account will have various portfolio of securities uh, representing all the different positions that are held in that account. All right, so when a, top, a stock trade is executed, the respective account holders stock position information is updated in the stock position stream, right? So again, you're listening for a stock trade come in on your account, you'll flag it and say, this is my particular account. And you uh, will basically read, so for example, you've your account, you've executed a trade uh, for Oracle shares as shown here, you wanted to buy an additional 100 shares, that's indicated there at the top. So what you do is read the previous uh, stock position stream value, again, out of the stock position table view is how you can access that or directly from the stock stream itself, either way. And then you take that older information and you, you update it, right? So we went from a position of 900 shares with an average share price of $25, and now we've added 100 shares an executed price of thirty-seven ninety-nine, and so now that that reflects a new position of one thousand total shares, and a new average price of twenty-six twenty-nine, and so that can be updated, and you update that again in that change log position, and this can be used as well. Now, similarly, an account position for Net Netflix dropped from nine fifty to seven fifty, as shown here. You can see that as well in the purple, uh, and this is the result of a successful sale of two hundred shares on that account as well. So again, this is a change log. We're listening for trades and we're updating the positions of every individual account on that. Again, we're using the ticker symbol as a key allows us to construct a table view that contains the most recent holdings information for every ticker symbol. So again, we can use this information to feed other user interfaces as well. So let's start with the table lookup case. This is again, uh, the first use case will demonstrate using the table views get method. That was the first method in the API uh, to join a table with an active stream consumer. Again, this is for data enrichment purposes. We will be using the table views get method to perform lookups on a per key basis. So this is shown visually here. Again, we have a stock quote stream, very fast moving data set, right? For data enrichment purposes, we wanna use these lookup capabilities to augment or enrich this uh, fast moving data set. Uh, so here we can join the stock positions table to the stock quote stream to present the end user uh, a real-time update on the value and performance of their stock positions, right? So again, we're joining on a primary key. So this is like executing the SQL statement you see there at the top, where you're joining a stock quote stream uh, on a stock position table. Uh, the keys being the symbol themselves, so that's your join. And then you're gonna get this information back, right? So again, the stock, for example, here you have the latest uh, ticker symbol for Oracle is 3799. You can go look up your stock position value, which again was updated in the previous slide as we saw to be a thousand for this particular account. And then you can calculate that value. So again, the value in the, in the light yellow box at the top came from the stock quote table and we joined it with in the light blue box and the bottom, as you can see there in the middle, the number of shares. And then we can calculate your net gain and your percent gain based on that information. So that is all derived information from those two, tab those two tables. And that will be demonstration one we'll do here. We're doing the demos, I'll do the demos at the end just, to, just for the sake of uh, continuity. But I wanted to point out the code right away. I want to highlight some of the code that I will be demonstrating here. First notice the creation of a table view uh, on the stock position topic. This creates a continuously updated map of the latest stock positions within our portfolio. Uh, next, we create a standard Pulsar consumer on the fast moving stock, stock quote topic. We create a subscription. Uh, in order to read every incoming stock quote. Now we use the message listener interface pattern here in, in order uh, inside that uh, listener. So every time a new message comes in, we're gonna perform a table lookup on each stock quote that, 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 that comes in. And we do a lookup there in that line where we're doing a stock position is equal to table get based on that ticker symbol, right? Now, if we have a position in our portfolio for that ticker symbol, which is more than likely not the case, because there's a lot of a lot of stocks and we only own a subset of those, that will be a non-non value for position, right? So that's kind of a guard that pre prevents us from executing this every time. 
But if we own that position, then we can take that information combined from the, that we got from the table, plus from the current message, and use it to, uh, to you know, create a, a, a combined view or an enriched view of these two data sets, right? So we can show the ticker symbol, the currently quoted price coming from the, from the stock quote topic, and joining that with the position value we've gotten from the table as far as what our average purchase price was, the quantity we have, and do some calculations uh, based on you know whether we've created we have a profit or a loss, uh, you know in net real dollars on that. So that's really what we're going to demonstrate here. But you can see that this is joining a topic via lookup using the get to do a stream uh, to a stream using the table. The the second use case we're going to demo is called the single scan use case. And this second demo will highlight the single uh, where you scan the table exactly once using the for each method. Uh, to, to, to perform an action against each entry in the table exactly once. Now a good use case for this, for, you know, for periodic updates of a stock information page uh, that combines all the information about a stock to present in a single pane of glass, right? And it provides a calculation at a point in time. So again, the use case would be uh, the users in our portfolio or they're in our application, they want to research a stock. So they go to that individual type, type in those symbol or symbols and they say, I wanna see what's the current quoted price for the symbol, what are some of the stats on it, what's the day high, what's the low value, uh, what's the beta, what's the average volume, all this different information. And all of that will be fed into a, a single uh, user interface that they can look up at all this information. Those of you that look, look at things like uh, Yahoo Finance will see that on a, any sort of particular uh, stock page if you do this lookup sort of thing. Uh, as you can see here, we're joining table to table and uh, highlighted, you know, again, Using the color coding, we bring some of the data over from the stock quote, again, being the latest price and the symbol, and we combine that with the stats data, again, tying it together, low, high, daily, daily volume, et cetera. All that information can be joined, and it's logically equivalent to the following uh, SQL statement shown there, where, you're, again, you're joining the stock quote table to the stock stats table on you know, the respective symbol ID of each one, and so that's the logical information of that. Now, again, we will be demonstrating this at the end. I'll take an entire section to do that, but I want to highlight some of the code that I will be demonstrating again here. First, notice at the top that we have the creation of two different table views. The first is the stock quote topic, uh, one on the top. The first is on the stock quote topic itself, which can, creates a continuously updated map of the latest stock quotes. Uh, the second is the stock stats topic, and this creates an updated map of the latest stats for each stock. Again, this is driven by the stock trades that are executed separately. That gets processed and then eventually updated uh, to represent these, you know, again, the daily moving average, things like that. Now, when a user wants to view some information, begin about one or more of these stocks, again, they were doing some research. We want to present this information from both tables for that security, uh, such as an Apple stock. Okay, what's the current price? Uh, and then we can present this view to a user that combines this information uh, from both tables uh, for that given symbol. And the for each method allows us to do just that. Uh, so this is how we're gonna, gonna do that. Again, for each one uh, in that stock quote that they're, that they're looking for, we go and do this information and you, and you combine that information for you. So again, that would be filtered, uh, typically uh, filtered by no, a set number of symbols. This would be called by user interface to get this information one time, maybe periodically refreshed every you know, one second or so but it's just a one-time point in time calculation and you calculate this data. Now the third uh, demonstration I'm going to give will highlight the use of the for each and listen method to scan the table and perform an action on the contents uh, periodically based on updating information in the table that we've run this for each and listen method on. So a good use case for this is after, you know, after a trade, you want to update the user's uh, interface to reflect their new positions including new uh, potential securities that they've added or drop securities from closed out positions. So you're basically joining a slowly changing table, which is their stock portfolio. They're not trading, assuming this is not an algorithm that's changing, changing constantly an algorithm based tra a trade a scenario, but actually an actual human that's trading. So it's a very slow position uh, with a stock quotes that are mo it's moving very fast. So you attach the run, the for each and listen, uh, method on the slow changing table to trigger the change only after an executed trade changes the stock position table entries themselves, right? And so uh, this will be in a user interface. You'll see I have I own uh, uh, a thousand shares of Oracle now. I want to uh, see how much value, what my net gain or loss is 
uh, by getting the most recent quote and combining that to my stock position table. Again, I want to highlight a few things of the code we're going to be demonstrating here. First, notice again that we create a, a table view on the stock position topic. Uh, this creates a continuously updated map of the latest uh, stock positions within our portfolio. You know, like 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 we did in the first in the first demonstration. So again, I just this, it's just a get stock position table call, and that encapsulates all that. But note that on that table itself, this is again this is the slow slow changing table. We're going to execute the for each and listen method here, and then inside of that code. We're going to do a quote lookup, get that information, and if we get the quote information back, we can demonstrate, update that new value, uh, do these do these calculations, the net gain, the net loss, the number of shares, based on new net data from the position table, as well as new data from the stock quote table. So uh, this this uh, that for each and listen triggers the recalculation of the net gain for your portfolio whenever there is a change in your portfolio positions, whether buy whenever a buy or sell trade is executed. So having talked about it enough, now it's demo time. Let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna demo and then I will get to the demo. First and foremost, I haven't mentioned earlier, uh, is step zero. There's gonna be included in the code is the stock trade generator that's used to populate uh, the stock quote, the stock trade, the stock stats, and the stock position topics that we discussed earlier in this talk. All those topics have to have data somewhere. This is generating synthetic data for a limited set of, of ticker symbols, in this case, 10. Uh, and it simulates not only uh, active quotes changing, but trades being executed periodically, which triggers the recalculation of the stats, and so on and so forth. And so I'll have three separate demos, the first being adjoining an active stream of stock quotes to stock positions within the table view that we highlighted in that uh, graphic. So we're, again, we're taking the stock, stock quotes and updating it to your position. The second one will be a table to table join single time, which is again, joining a stock quote table view to a stock stats table view. And last will be the continuous or periodic scan triggered by the stock position table whenever to the stock quote table every time the portfolio positions change. And with that, let's start the demo. This, uh, the example code here that's available in the repo. First thing to note is it has a readme file. So if you want to clone this repo and run this demonstration for yourself, all the information is here available in this readme, including how to set up uh, the environment to run it, the JDK required and Maven requirements, options on how to run a Pulsar cluster, uh, and also inf information on the different demonstration steps, including how to build it and how to run this information. Now, as I mentioned before, what I'm going to demo, step zero was the generation of the raw data that's gonna feed all these other use cases, and that's handled uh, here by the stock trade generator class inside the COM example stocks generators uh, data generators method. You can see here we have all the different output topics, quotes, trades, stats, etc. already listed, and we're going to have a generation of these particular securities handled. These the subset of securities is going to be limiting the scope of our demonstration uh, to do this. Now, as you can see from the readme file, in order to do this, it's a simple one-step command in order to execute this particular process and get it started. So I'll go ahead and execute that now inside a terminal window to start running this information. And we should start getting this information here shortly. Uh, it's running. We will now go to the respective uh, methods here. And we'll try to subscribe to these topics just to make sure that this information is there. We can see information is going. Different stock quotes are coming in at various prices. Next, we'll look at some trades and see if some trades are getting executed. Here, we can see various sizes are executed, so the data is flowing through nicely. We'll look at some stats that are being generated as well to see this information is there. Daily highs and lows, uh, timestamps, things like that. And last but not least, we'll see some different stock positions and people's positions are changing over time, you know, very slowly. Things are being purchased. Uh, trades and things like that are being being executed very slowly at various rates. So you can see fast data, slower data, slowest at all. So this is just to show that the data is available. Now the first use case that we we're going to run was going to be again joining of a stream, a stock quote stream to a stock position table as we mentioned. So again, we create a table view on our stock positions, which is represented by this table here, barely slowly uh, changing positions of what we have and what we currently own, uh, and listening actively to a stock quote. So we're listening to all this information here, and we're going to update this information 
uh, based on that. And then if we have uh, for all the all the entries in our stock portfolio, we're going to spit out this information as well. And this can be executed uh, as well using a new terminal. So again, we'll, we will use this. That is not it. We'll go ahead and copy this from here just to make sure that everything works as expected. The uh, documentation works. Hopefully this copy works. And we'll run the demo here. And so now we're seeing this should start running and we're seeing every time a trade comes in, we're updating this information as well. So continuously getting quotes. This is moving very quickly and we're showing in real time. I'll go ahead and end this guy just so it doesn't get cluttered. On here, come on, stop. Control C, Control C. There we go. For example, we have GM in our portfolio. It listened to the last trade here. Uh, we purchased it at 88 and so this is representing our net gain or loss. We lost a lot of money on this one. Uh, Netflix, the last trade was at this. This is our purchase price and this is continuously updated on that. Again, this is done doing a lookup scan and this is very easy to run. Now the second, uh, and so this is this particular class right here. Now the second one is joining a table to a table. And here we're going to join the stock quote topic to the stock stats. So every time a stock quote comes in, you're gonna to want to get uh, new information, new calculated stats from this table over here uh, to show this information as well. So again, we're doing this a one-time scan. It should do it exactly once. It does it at a point in time calculation. So let's go ahead and execute that and showing you how this uh, code works. And here again, you should see this exactly one time. So we're gonna do it once and that's it, right? So again, this is all again, everything, uh, all the different quotes in the, in the universe, uh, real-time snapshot at this particular point in time, what we were doing, Netflix at you know five o'clock, uh, was exactly this quote. These were the daily stats for that particular point in time. So that's it. It's a one-time shot. It's never going to run again. We can leave it sitting here forever. Uh, if you Again, if you wanted to trigger this information every minute, you could wrap this in a class and have somebody call it periodically to trigger this these things incrementally over time. The third demonstration, again, is handled in this particular class here. We're joining a stock position table, joining it to a stock quote table. So again, this is joining a our stock positions, which is a slow moving table uh, to the stock quotes, which are moving very quickly uh, on this. And so we're going to do, as we mentioned before, we create the table views first, the stock quote table, stock position table first, and then the slow moving table, again, the stock position table, we do a for each and listen. And so only when our positions change, will this all these values get calculated again and again. And so it's going to update itself periodically, but not very frequently, uh, because we're not we're not changing our positions, we're not executing trades that frequently, right? And so this is the first time, and you can see here Intel. We traded Intel, so the only that one updated, right? So we've lost. It was 410. We executed a trade, and so this first set here represents everything that was the first time. The first time too, you do a for each. And then all of these are generated by the listener interface. So these have been updates reflecting trades in Intel and GM respectively. Uh, we can see that we've, in this particular one, we, we sold off a lot of shares. We went from 2,200 roughly to 570, uh, you know, to, to sort of cut our losses in this case. Now we traded some AMD, so on and so forth. But again, there's, I'm not doing anything to trigger this. It is happening because trades and updates in the position portfolio. So again, you see an update here. Uh, Intel changed. Uh, this is reflected here uh, as well. So you can see the differences. So every time this changes over here, our stock trades, which we're listening to, that triggers execution of just uh, that action on that new changed value, right? So again, Oracle came in likewise. So this is exactly what you expect. Uh, this is continuing to go on here. Yeah, so Oracle changed, 471. Next trade, we did a trade on Netflix. Our positions change, so on and so forth. So this is this is everything happening in real time, and this is showing you the three use cases: uh, how you can join a stream to a table, uh, and two different ways of joining tables: uh, slow moving tables and fast moving tables. Uh, one is a one time shot, and one is a continuous one using the Pulsar Table View API. So thank you very much.